All right, students, welcome, welcome, welcome. Circulatory system, day two. So yesterday we spoke about veins, arteries, capillaries, and the heart, and basically just what the circulatory system does, all right? Now, let's just kind of review. So our aim says, how does a circulatory system maintain homeostasis? And as usual, homeostasis means a stable internal environment. Okay, so it says, how are veins and arteries different? Well, first of all, arteries have thick walls. Okay, they're the largest. And they carry oxygenated blood away from the heart. Veins have thin walls, not as thin as capillaries, but they have thin walls, right? They're smaller than arteries. They carry deoxygenated blood, blood back to the heart, okay? Now, what is the name of the body system that transports blood throughout the body? You guys should know this already. It's the circulatory system. You might also see it as the cardiovascular system. They mean the same thing. Part A, the blood mobile video. So I, one of my personal favorites is the blood mobile video. This directions while you are watching the blood mobile video, answer the following questions. So just pause here for a second and make sure that you're watching the video. And while you're watching the video, you should be taking notes so that way you can answer the questions that follow, okay? Once you're done watching the video, press play again and we will be going over what we need to go over here on the worksheet. Come back to the worksheet, okay? So pause here and watch the video. Okay, good. So now that you're back, number one says, what are some materials that are transported around the body via the blood mobile? So there's a lot of things that our blood actually carries. So our blood carries nutrients. And some of those nutrients are definitely sugar, right? Our bodies need a constant supply of sugar, especially glucose, in order for cellular respiration to occur, right? They need proteins and that type of stuff. They also carry around uh, water. Excuse the bell. Water, hormones. That's how our hormones actually travel through there, so insulin, glucagon, hormones from the pituitary gland, adrenaline, epinephrine, all of those hormones are transported via the circulatory system by the blood mobile, quote unquote. And then um, even waste, waste products, such as CO2, which we don't want, and a little bit of water too, um, yeah. Those are carried around by the blood mobile. The blood mobile also contains white blood cells. And we know that white blood cells are a part of the immune system and they attack foreign organisms, such as bacteria um, or viruses. All right, so is, the blood, is blood really a delivery service? Why or why not? Well, what you really should have gotten from that was, yeah, it absolutely is a delivery service. B b blood is the only tissue in our body that's really actually like traveling. Not the only tissue, but the most important one that's traveling. So blood travels all throughout the body. Blood travels all throughout the body to give 
our cells what they need in order to function properly. Okay. All right. Part B notes. So we spoke a lot about veins, arteries, and a teeny bit about capillaries, which we'll talk more about capillaries in a bit. Um, but obviously the heart is a really special organ and is broken into several parts. First of all, we have four chambers, right? A right and left atrium and a right and left ventricle, okay? So if we're coming, the atria are at the top. Atria is plural for atrium. And the ventricles are at the bottom. Oh gosh, I did this in a different color. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna do this in a different color. And I'm gonna do the right side blue. Blue. And then the left side red. And I'm doing that on purpose. Okay, now, obviously our heart is flipped when we're actually looking at it. That's why it looks like the right side is on the left and the left side is on the right, okay? Because if you're facing the opposite direction, then it would be exactly where it needs to be. So you don't need to know what all of these other words are like on there, but we are gonna trace the flow of blood. So blood is coming in from the body and it's deoxygenated because the cells just finished using the oxygen from that blood. It picked up the oxygen and dropped off the carbon dioxide. So here, blood, deoxygenated blood, which I'm drawing in blue, is gonna travel to the right atrium and go through this valve that's here to the right ventricle, okay? So the right atrium receives deoxygenated blood blood from the body okay now what the right ventricle is going to do is that when it contracts they have really really strong muscular walls which are right here okay it's going to contract and it's going to push the blood all the way to the pulmonary artery, okay? So that's gonna go to the lungs. Pulmonary means lungs, okay? I think in Spanish, lungs um, is pulmona, pulmona. I don't know if I said that right. So that's one way that you can remember that, okay? So the right ventricle contracts and it's going to take deoxygenated blood, blood, uh-oh, what just happened, what just happened, A2, sorry about that, sorry about that, okay, so it's going to take, whoops, take deoxygenated blood, to the lungs. And basically what's gonna happen is that the lungs are going to oxygenate that blood. So the lungs, obviously we inhale. My lungs are now giving the oxygen to the red blood cells so that the red blood cells become oxygenated and they're gonna come back down through the pulmonary vein, okay? And when it does that, it's gonna come back in and it's going to come into the left atrium. So the left atrium receives oxygenated blood from 
the lungs, okay? And now that oxygenated blood is gonna go through another valve, which is here. And it's gonna go to the left ventricle, okay? Now what the left ventricle is gonna do, ah, oh, no, I did this wrong, I did this wrong, I did this wrong, I did this wrong. Did I do this wrong? Oh no, I didn't. This should say left ventricle, not right ventricle. Sorry guys. Yeah, that should say left ventricle. So what the left ventricle is going to do is that because it has strong walls, it's gonna be able to, with a lot of force, push all that blood through that valve and it's gonna go here and go out to the rest of the body through the aorta, okay? So the left ventricle actually um, takes oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. And then once the rest of the body uses that up, okay, so let's label this to the body, okay? It's gonna come back deoxygenated, come through here, go to the right atrium, go to the right ventricle. The right ventricle is gonna take it to the lungs. Once at the lungs, it's going to get oxygenated and it's gonna come back down through the pulmonary vein, through the left atrium, through the left ventricle, and then get pumped to the rest of the body. And it's gonna just keep happening over and over and over and over and over again, okay? I know that that was a lot, but just study and you should be fine. Notice that blood only travels one way. It does not travel multiple ways. And we're gonna read briefly about valves and how they help to prevent that, okay? So there are valves located in the places, in places within the heart. These valves are responsible for preventing backflow of blood. They ensure that blood only travels in one direction continuously. Veins are the only blood vessels that contain valves, okay? So I'll show you where the valves are in the heart. I'm like highlighting it here. Those are the two valves that are there. There are more valves. You can probably see a valve that's like open here. And then there's one that's open here, okay? And basically, like, it does exactly what it says that it does, right? They stop the backflow of blood. We don't want oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood to mix. That would be a crime scene, okay? So, as usual, remember to do your exit ticket, which is here. And have a great one. We will reconvene tomorrow. Bye.